Good day, welcome back to another episode of the Cubane series, the series where we're trying to make Cubane dicarboxylic acid from stuff from the hardware store. And um, it has been going on for about three years, maybe over three years now, and I'm here in front of the camera to tell you that we've actually done it. I'm not sure if I thought this day was ever going to come. Everyone has been very nice about it and uh, very encouraging. And lots of people have said, I can't believe you can't make this work. It is very easy. I don't know why you're having such trouble with it, um, which is very encouraging. <laughs> We've done it. We've done it. This is the reaction series. We spent a long while, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, um, at this UV step before eventually trying a photosensitized reaction using benzophenone Ooh, yeah. and 395 nanometer LED panels, which was last episode. And then we went all the way up to the Cubane in the last episode where we got a precipitate. It looked like like tar. Instead of dismissing it, we learned to embrace the tar and got very excited about this tar that we've collected. Let's go! We're, we're looking at some cubane dicarboxylic acid. Um, that being said, we should definitely wait for further analysis. Okay, so I got some of that solid. I, I got a little bit out and sent it off for NMR analysis, NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. And so I sent it to my mate, Brian, who's up in Queensland, and he ran it through the NMR analysis for me and excitedly texted me back that this product was 100% benzophenone, <laughs> which means there's no, cub there's, there's no cubane in that at all. There's, no, there's nothing, there's no cubane. Let's go. Which is very classic of this series. <laughs> the roller coaster never ends. <laughs> as soon as you think we've done something good, it hasn't actually worked. <laughs> okay, so it was pretty disappointing to have our solid come back as benzophenone because it suggests that the reaction hasn't worked at all or it's coming back as pretty like pure benzophenone and the carbons in the cubane don't just disappear. They, they have to be somewhere. Even if the cubane has fallen apart, we should still see peaks of like tar or something. So the, the realization is the cubane is probably still in there, the cubane dicarboxylic acid. It's still in there, but it's just not precipitated out. All right, and here is our magical tar that we got very excited about because we thought it was the cubane and um, we've run the NMR analysis. You can see where I've taken the sample out from there. So that's bad, obviously, um, but all is not lost because if we read one of the references that we're following, the reference that we were meant to be following um, nearly completely exactly or whatever. We notice that they also say the cubane doesn't precipitate out. They sort of mention that it's pretty weird. They use a phrase I don't see very often, but kind of says, hey, this doesn't make any sense, but this is what happened to us and it was pretty reproducible. And it's a phrase in our hands, you know, this happens. Like everyone else did their thing and we'd expected it to work that way, but in our hands, it just did this fucking thing. So, you know, whatever, but you know, it's better that they report it the correct way that actually happened to them because here we are reproducing it and it's, in our hands as well, in my fucking crusty hands, it's it's done the same thing. Well, at least we think so. So our cubane dicarboxylic acid is still floating around in solution here. It's good not to throw away any solutions immediately, although we are potentially two or three weeks after we initially did this filtration. So maybe the, the <laughs> cubane has all decomposed. So it does suck being a very slow person, but um, you know, what can you do? So we'll give this another little filter because there's some absolute crud absolute scunge down at the bottom there uh, which is probably just more benzaldehyde that's slowly settled out once we remove the scunge we can do a liquid liquid extraction so what the paper did and once again i keep deviating from the paper and it keeps punishing me for doing it but the paper evaporates it down under vacuum so you don't um, decompose any of the organic stuff uh, and then you have sodium bromide mixed in with your cubane dicarboxylic acid. I'm going to instead do a liquid liquid extraction. Um, so I'm going to use dichloromethane. Dichloromethane is going to mix with the water. Well, it won't mix, it'll separate out, but all the cubane will dissolve into the, the DCM and then we can evaporate the DCM and we're left with our cubane. Why it hasn't precipitated out is it's strange. It's strange, but it's probably because I use just far too much water. Um, just because of the scale we were working on, it's hard to reflux a reaction where it calls for like five mils of water or something. I can't remember. I ended up using 30 mils or something. So it's, it's just such an excess of water because of the small scale we're working on. And my stuff is just not set up to do very small reactions. You know, I'm like, oh, I'll get a small flask is like a, a 250 mil flask for me. <laughs> anyway, um, let's get this filtered and then we can do a liquid liquid extraction and then we can think about yeah, being positive about all this again once we're back on track to where we think we are, which is actually having the Cubane. <laughs>
And after all that work, we're left with um, a tiny amount of solid. This is probably Cubane, but there's like, you know, maybe a couple milligrams here, which is just uh, not very much. So I'm, I'm going to assume that the Cubane doesn't really want to come out of, of the, the solution very good and go into the dichloromethane. So to make that a little bit better, I'm just going to increase the polarity of this uh, solution by dissolving a whole lot of um, salt into it. And then hopefully uh, the DCM can dissolve the, uh, the the cubane out of there a bit easier because <laughs> uh, this is not much. I mean, it's potentially enough to analyze, but um, purpose is to try and actually get some enough cubane to go on to the next step with not just like prove we've done it. So uh, let's let's do this all again, but um, dissolve a whole heap of salt in there first. Okay, I wasn't getting very far with the dichloromethane extracts um, uh, even after saturating with uh, uh, salt. But on a whim, I thought I'd try ethyl acetate instead. And look, all the colors actually gone into the layer <laughs> with the dichloromethane. It was, so, it was so clear it wasn't taking much of the color, which I assume the organic product is uh, causing that, that color. So, okay, maybe dichloromethane is just a terrible solvent for this. So I'm just gonna do a couple of extractions with um, ethyl acetate and then drive up all the ethyl acetate uh, in the same way I've been doing it with the dichloromethane, and then hopefully that leaves us with more of an actual solid behind, <laughs> a bit more of a solid residue than we've been collecting from uh, evaporating off the dichloromethane because I'm getting stuff all, but this looks much more promising, so I'm right, just gonna do that right now. Oh, yes, okay, we're back here at the start now. Um, this solid, well, I mean, the, this red tar, I sent that off for NMR analysis. Once again, to Brian, what do you know? There's actually Cubane peaks in there. Well done, everyone. <laughs> the Cubane acid is, is definitely a major component, but it's not like it's majority Cubane. It's very, it's very impure. But the good news is we definitely have the Cubane in there. So, so it's all worked. Big thank you to Brian up in the Queensland University of Technology for running these uh, spectra for me. He actually has a postdoc opening in his group. He does polymer stuff with, with sulfur and selenium and tellurium. I'm not sure if he does a lot of tellurium stuff, but I know that he wants to. Do you like Queensland? We've made Cubane and I got some person a job. I, I, that's, success is all around. Speaking of success, there's new merch. Celebrate the Cubane with me by wearing a shirt with the Cubane on it. Very classy. Look, it says Cubane on the back. <laughs> Cubane 2023. We actually did it. We did it. God damn did it. That's enough of me talking. Let's go back to the present tense. The future? The past? I don't know. Where, where are we in the timeline? I'm, we're just going to go back behind the camera now. So these were the DCM extracts. I'm assuming it's the same product, but there's very little in here. So this could just be impurity. So maybe we'll just forget about this one and just look at the ethyl acetate extracts, which is this one. It was a yellow solution that went down into a red tar. I mean, of course, it feels very fitting that at the end, well, this isn't the end, but you know, our first sort of Cubane is a tar because the whole series has just been combating various tars. 0.55 grams of tar, so half a gram of tar. Great. So that is there, right? So we'll, we'll put that aside because I'd like to loop back around to when we're running the UV reaction, we ran this stuff through um, as our first stuff and then while we were thinking about what was happening, we ran two more test reactions through the UV setup. And one of those reactions was Chemiolus. Is it Chemiolus? Chemi, it doesn't matter. Some of his stuff, so it was 0.25 grams in each. So a total of 0.5 grams. I mean, it looked like it did the UV reaction properly as well. So there was no reason to throw that out. So I did the whole making cubane process with those two solutions as well. Combined them, uh, evaporated the solvent off to just leave us with that solid residue, which we then reflux for uh, several hours over a sodium hydroxide solution or in a sodium hydroxide solution. And it goes that sort of awful brownie color. Now, the bit that tricked us up last time was that none of the cubane dicarboxylic acid precipitated out. It was just the benzophenone, which is what led us astray. However, when we added the acid this time, or added the, yeah, added the acid this time, we see 
a lot more precipitate and that's this thing here look how much precipitate is in here so i mean i could be fooled again and i hate i don't mind being fooled by chemistry because chemistry is a crafty trickster but getting fooled twice by the chemistry is not something I aim to do. <laughs> I don't want to get fooled again by this, but there does look like a fuck ton of precipitate in here. All right, I've decided I wouldn't be fooled by the tar a second time. So I, I've readjusted the pH of this um, with some sodium hydroxide solution. So now it's um, on the basic side. So all the cubane dicarboxylic acid would react with the sodium hydroxide to form sodium, uh, the sodium salt, uh, which is much more soluble. So all the precipitate we see is benzophenone, the stuff we don't want. So we can now filter all that shit off and then we can reacidify uh, the solution. Stuff probably won't precipitate out that much, but we can then do an extraction with ethyl acetate, which we know works, uh, to get the rest of the cubane out um, that will be free of benzophenone. It's very tempting to be fooled here again because this really looks like the precipitate, but this is what happened last time. There's our cubane. It's not in this. It looks like a lot of material, but it's not. And it's not the thing we want. I've got to convince myself of this. So this solution, we've now got to reacidify it. I'm also going to add in a lot of salt just to increase the polarity of solution. So um, the cubane acid will uh, more likely go into the ethyl acetate. Um, I obviously stole this salt from the kitchen. Here's all our combined extracts, it's very dark, and we have some, well, I mean, it looks like some insoluble shit in there too. Um, well, I guess low solubility stuff. There's some of it on the side. And some water down the bottom. It's mostly water down there with a little bit of the precipitate. So I'll dry it out over some calcium chloride and then run it through a filter, and then it'll get rid of all the polymerized, polymerized crap, as well as the calcium chloride, and then we can evaporate off the ethyl acetate to leave us just with our nice residue of cubane, which will probably look exactly like this, but all going well, except for the part where I spilled the ethyl acetate a little bit on the table here. A bit sloppy. <sighs> I'm a professional, I'm a professional. So here we are with our bloody Cubane, disgusting tar. So, uh, maybe not this DCM, yeah, we, we've disregarded these DCM extracts. So here we are. It's probably all up about three quarters of a gram. So, so not, not a whole lot. And we know it's very impure. We can look at it, we can look at the analysis. It's all very impure. So the next step is to turn um, this cubane diacid into the methyl ester. And this is what everyone does when, when making this, because you can go from methyl ester back to the dicarboxylic silic acid very easily. Uh, and it's just a great way of purifying it. The series isn't over. We have cubane, but we would like to end up with a cubane solid that is actually nice to look at not this awful um, shit. But we should be able to get to uh, somewhat approaching a nice white solid with a methyl ester um, in the next video, potentially. <laughs> Who knows? So I'll see you next video for um, less tar, maybe. Potentially less tar, but you never know. You never know.